Um, well, for somebody like me to be here is, uh, is truly a privilege, and, and I've got to thank Daniel and the Singularity University for that. And I'm hoping that uh, the next few minutes are going to be slightly different to what you might normally expect, because I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist. Um, I'm just an ordinary guy, fortunate to wear an extraordinary piece of technology, which is being interfered with by the mic. Um, and I'm here briefly to speak about uh, the benefits of high-tech prosthetics and how they can give you back far more than just the ability maybe to tie your shoelaces or, or pick up an egg. I had an accident at work, 2006. My arm was trapped, crushed and almost severed, uh, putting me back together. It wasn't going to be quick or easy. I was facing up to 10 years of treatment with no real guarantee of success. So between bouts of surgery, infection, pain, and physio, I, I, I turned to the internet, and I started researching as much as I could to find out exactly what I was letting myself in for and, and how it was going to impact on me. After about six months or so, my arm was showing no signs of healing. I collected my notes, I took them to a consultant, asked him to read them, look at the big picture, and then come back and explain the benefits of keeping my arm. Four days later, I became an amputee. And in the process, saved the NHS about £400,000 in treatment costs. So, it's time to get my life back together. A bionic arm, no problem. Job done, back to work, brilliant. You're right. I was put on a standard NHS treatment plan. Within 12 months of my accident, the strong, fit, active Nigel that I knew had all but disappeared. The guy that I saw in the mirror was slowly becoming a physical and, and mental wreck. Two years after my accident, I'd had a second amputation, more infection. Physically, life was a challenge. Psychologically, I was in a very dark place. I had the massive mood swings, the, the highs, the crashing lows, the fears, the self-doubts, the frustration and, and the anger. The sudden raging anger that I, I quite often took out my wife and my son. It took me a, an awful long time to appreciate that they'd also lost my arm. It was around about this time that I, I really started to notice a, a change in other people's attitudes towards me. Strangers would often avoid me. Very rarely would people make eye contact or start a conversation. Oh, they'd stop and they'd stare, sometimes with pity, fear, disgust. Or sometimes they just point, maybe laugh, or yell an insult or two. I stopped going out. I became withdrawn, and I'd shut myself away from everyone, sometimes for days on end. Just me, sitting in my garage with my demons. About three years after my accident, my life was going to change yet again. Bang, heart attack, dead, game over. Or so I thought. The surgeons at Papworth decided six stents and they sent me off to cardio rehab. So we fast forward now to 2012. I got a call. A company called RSL Steeper had a new hand. Would I help trial it? Yeah. And a couple of months later, I became, I think, the first guy in the world to start long term testing of the B Bionic 3. I'm going to give a brief demonstration, if I can. Uh, I am getting cross-feed from the mic, so it's going to be very brief. I'll talk to any of you afterwards. I'll show off until the batteries run flat. <laughs> so, here's my hand. This is what it does. Um, it's a two-part scenario. We have a, the socket from my elbow to my wrist. This is the most important part. If you can't wear this comfortably all day, it doesn't matter what that is. It will stay in the corner of the room. I've got a, a silicon liner, custom fitted to my stump. 
embedded into the liner are two electrodes, and they just sit against my skin. They're not connected, it's not invasive. You come down a bit further, this white thing is a one-way valve. I push my arm in, it forms a vacuum. It's, it's pretty secure. I've asked quite a few people to try and pull my arm off, and, and no one's done it so far. <laughs> um, I also have a wrist rotator in here, my battery pack, my PowerPoint, etc. That all sits there. And then we come to the hand. Um, they call it multi-articulating. I just call it clever. Uh, basically, I imagine I'm squeezing a ball with my phantom limb. The electrode picks that up as a signal, transmits it to the hand, and the hand closes. If I imagine I'm opening a can of beer, it opens. And if you're a guy and you can't squeeze balls and open beers, maybe you shouldn't have one of these. <laughs> it also has a two-position thumb. Now, this isn't an electric, it's a manual thumb. And some people say, well, why not electric? Well, a manual thumb takes 10 grand off the price. People like me, we're not rich. So again, I open and close. I can read my books, I can hold my keys. If I want to change grip, I open it fully and then give a second open signal. Now when I close, I get my finger point. OK, this is cool for typing, I guess, but it's in the wrong position. So I give a, a co-contraction, and you might hear the beep. Maybe not. Um, now the hand is deactivated, the wrist will work. So again, if I open a beer, it goes this way. If I squeeze a ball, it goes this way. Uh, and if I want to show off, it, it goes this way. <laughs> I also have, if I'm using my mouse, obviously, I, I press the magic button on the back, and then we can single click, double click, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it goes on. I have eight grip patterns on this at the moment. I have another six on the laptop. If I need to change grips or I feel like I want to change grips, I just Bluetooth them over, um, and that's, that's easily done. Now. I've used this every day that it's been available to me. The effect it's had on my life has been extraordinary. People still stop and stare, but I would. But it's not with fear or pity anymore. People don't avoid me. They don't laugh at me. They tend to laugh with me. You know, we'll, we'll talk, and, and I'll probably show off. The best thing for me is, I call it the bee bionic effect. When we shake hands, People smile. They always smile. And I see that handshake and that smile as a sign of acceptance for, for who I am. In the brief period of time that I've been speaking to you now, another 20 people have started the journey that I began some eight years ago. Every 30 seconds, somebody somewhere becomes an amputee. And it can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone you can see, anyone you know, anyone you love. But I do believe that life-changing doesn't have to be life-ending. With the proper care, the proper support, and high-tech high prosthetics like this, amputees can have the chance to live the kind of independent lives that most of us just take for granted. It's a chance to live a new, maybe different life. In the spring of 2012, I was being quizzed by a psychiatrist. Where do you see yourself in a year or so? I thought about it. In the countryside, I said, in a field, sitting in my car, with a hosepipe attached to the exhaust. I wasn't being dramatic. That's all, that is all I could see. I couldn't have been more wrong. A year or so later, June the 15th, 2013, I stood on stage for the first time in my life and, and shared my story. I guess I didn't know it then, but my new and different life was starting. And it's continued. And every single one of you, whether you know it or not, today you've been part of my new and different life, and I thank you for that.
Paris now. Thank you very much. Boss. Thank you, Nigel. And uh, I can have a anyway, I can do both. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to interfere. Let's see? The wrist is gone. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs>